Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to day three of Gumball 3000. Our support van is there. We're on board my Hurricane STO. The G63 is right there because we are departing from the city of Amsterdam to head for our longest leg. Look in the mirror. SLS Black Series ready to be transported away by Tony Turbo Transport. This, as I said, is the longest leg. We're going all the way down to the Swiss Alps, to Verbier. It's about 12 hours on Waze. We're setting off not the earliest, it's nearly 9 a.m. It's gonna be a long, long, long day with a checkpoint in France. We've got a lift system in here, thankfully, but we're starting in the car because we need to go. We've got to get a move on for everything that's ahead of us. It's basically seven hours to the first checkpoint. Hi there, guys. Oh yes, of course I can. And then from there, onwards to Switzerland. I am signing on an R34. Oh, this is very cool. Where would you like it? On the bonnet, on the roof? Doesn't matter. Let's go on the roof. There we go. All right, cheers, guys. Thank you. Thanks a lot. <laughs> See you later, guys. Have a good day. All righty, out we head. Lift system down. My car now wants me to go this way. I think we can do it. We will take it easy as we make our way. Oh, dear. Cyclists everywhere here. Uh, can we squeeze through? <laughs> mornings in Amsterdam, weekday mornings anyway. Like I said, we have a long, long drive today. It's many hours from here down. Of course, the direct route would actually take you through Germany. Gumball tends to avoid Germany because the authorities like to make it difficult, we could say. Previous experiences have been filled with trouble and none of us really want any of that today. So we've driven in Scotland, England, France, Belgium, Netherlands. We'll go back into Belgium now and then all the way through France before our sixth country of the tour, which will be Switzerland. So Tony is going to be flying down, taking the SLS to drop it off as part of our six cars, one rally idea that I had, which is turning out to be quite smooth sailing because the logistics were really, if I can say so myself, well organized. Uh, flying down though to pick up tomorrow's car, which he'll meet us with later on today. Uh, cycling carnage right now. There are cyclists endlessly coming past. This is a little bit concerning. <laughs> I have no idea how we're gonna be able to manage to pull out of here, especially with all three cars. But where there's a will, there's probably a way. And now, yeah, yeah, <laughs> bear with me. <laughs> Let's see what happens. And there goes the SLS. See you later, Tony. <laughs> it's so funny to be doing this. I know it sounds simple, but if you think about it, the truck can't drive at gumball pace. The truck has had to go six days in advance of us. So while we're here now, it's approaching Budapest, where we'll be in how many days time? Two and a half days? A couple of days time. Because it then has to drop at local places and then all the local places are helping to bring the cars to where we are. So Thornhedge, which is a car storage in the Netherlands, have helped here, which I've used to park my cars before, very kindly transported it and done all sorts. Tonight, Confusingly, because of Switzerland, the LT has actually been in Italy. It's been in Milan, which is a couple of hours the other side of Verbier where we're going. So the car's been in Italy and Tony's got to drive it about two or three hours to get it to where we're going to meet him later. I'll explain more when we actually get to Switzerland. For the time being, I have never been so terrified of cyclists as I am here. It's often joked about by Brits coming to Amsterdam that the cyclists here are mad and it's definitely the case. I mean, look at that. I was just about to start moving and the cyclists just fly across in front. Let's just wait. Let's let them all go. And I tell you what, everyone's so young. There are lots and lots of young cyclists commuting in the morning. Must have a very young population in Amsterdam. Anyway, we're off. Let's make some progress on our drive down to the checkpoint in France. There's a bright pink little hatch there. It's the van's much smaller brother our new support car. <laughs> it's a very similar color. We've lost the support van a little bit, and by lost, I mean there are a few cars behind us, but because of this slip road, are we gonna be able to see them up there somewhere? No, I think they're hidden behind the trees. Oh, I was hoping we might like pass under them or something, but we are about to cross into Belgium in a moment. Uh, and then it looks like our route is gonna take us into Luxembourg, which I think is an unplanned additional country but we'll have to add that up as we go. We are now at Belgium. There's the sign right in the middle. Welcome to Belgium. 
On the topic of pink support vehicles, there's a pink bus as well, which is funny because everyone calls our transit the pink bus. We believe that we're going to have some gumballers coming past in a moment, so we're kind of just taking it super easy to see who catches us over the next couple of minutes. In the mirrors there, 765LT. Wait for it. <laughs> Oh, that's fast. That thing just gets moving. It's the 765 LTs are so quick. Oh. Gone. I spy with my little eye something beginning with A, Aventador, SVJ, Mark McCann. Been taking it easy. <laughs> Another day, a different combo. Oh, sweet. But we're actually gonna come off here. We kind of planned that and lined it up. We've been taking it very easily to let them catch up. I like that kind of thing with live location sharing. It makes it so easy. We're gonna fill up, well, the van has about five kilometers of range. It's somewhere behind us. We've got a bit more, but we're gonna fill this up anyway, just to give it a full tank while we're here. Why not? Um, going so gently that I barely consumed any fuel. But first time we'll have got out of the car in what, I wanna say three and a bit hours. So that's gonna be quite pleasant. Unfortunately, how busy it is, is not pleasant. Oh, that's frustrating, I'm gonna to have to wait. We are gonna to have to queue. Let's go join the swamp. The van has arrived, both have been fueled, unusual on the road problems. We've got a video to upload. We're trying to figure this out and then we'll continue. With these, pink and white by the way, the matching pair, the reason we did the white wheels on the MSRT Transit was to match the STO. We've now got them together, it is another beautiful day, blue to full even, very blue skies. As soon as Brad has that for me, we're good to go. You said I should have kept rolling because I'll have it in two seconds. Boom, magic, right, let's hop in the car and continue. There's some kind of emergency services vehicle coming past, is that a police car? I think that's police. But given we're not doing anything particularly crazy, I don't think it's got anything to do with us. It's just coincidental that they're coming down the road here. Unless there's a gumballer in front of us that they're after. That's always possible. You never know with these things. <laughs> I don't have a clue what he's after. Uh, yeah. Gumball life, hey? We're at the border. Is this literally the border? Luxembourg, somewhere here, country number six, and random wind turbine. They're massive, those things. Crazy, anyway, I think we're in Luxembourg. That's definitely Luxembourg. There we go, Luxembourg, done. Sixth country, I can't remember if we even considered Luxembourg in the original list of countries that we're going to. We're only in Luxembourg for a short period. It's a tiny country before we go back into France, but obviously having a lot of fun with our little pack of cars that have assembled for this bit of the drive at the moment. And you never know, maybe we get some more joining us shortly. There's the sign for France. So back out of Luxembourg, it's not a new country though, but we do now have some lovely open auto routes. The other direction looks pretty horrific, but our direction is looking lovely. A little bit further on, we're in France, obviously with Mark, but the next car is interesting. So we've been driving with this Merc for a while. There's something about it though, or quite a few things about it, that have drawn a little bit of our attention. Um, obviously at first glance, that is the full Gumball 3000 livery for this drive, you would think. Let's just catch up quickly. However, Look at these details. Firstly, the stripes. The red and blue of those stripes are slightly off. They're not the right color. There are extra stickers as well that you can spot around. For example, on the bottom corner, you can see those extra stickers above the Fresh Sense sponsor of the rally. Another thing that I've noticed is the plate. That's a, well, it looks like a Quebec plate from Canada. CP063WY, but I'm pretty certain that's a French plate. Letter, letter, number, 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 letter, letter displayed on a Canadian style registration plate. Obviously there are no numbers on the side, but also some of the stickers just aren't quite right. 
It's small things, like if I come alongside, you can spot the say belt sticker up by the door handle. That feels a little too narrow. And then also at the very front, where the Hot Wheels stickers are, they should be inverted, different ones on different sides. I'm going really into detail with this. Long story short, while that sounds amazing, definitely busted a fake gumballer, because that's definitely not an, a gumball car. Definitely not a car on the official Gumball 3000 roster for this rally, which is kind of fun. I admire the effort. I just hope he doesn't try to go into the grids, because that's the bit that you know people have paid for to be on the rally, to be part of that. So <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Might try and pull over and ask him directly, like, are you on the rally? And if he says yes, oh, then it's fair game. If he says no, fair play, fair play. But nonetheless, had us confused at first. I think we'd have pretty much anybody who wasn't as into the details as we are also confused because it looks very, 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 very realistic. And no sooner than I have just stopped talking, <laughs> but we've been joined by another STO, Gumball STO Army. That one from Belgium. He is off, out of here. <laughs> yeah, no holding back. This thing crackles away, like really, really loud. Let me uh, go alongside, deafen myself for a moment. And yes, we did have a look on Instagram and see that the car used to have a zero zero on the side. You probably noticed that it didn't have any numbers. So it, you get the story, you get the point. This is where we start to feel very smug because this is a telepiage. I have, for all of our cars, the telepiage devices for France and also the telepass devices for Italy so that we can effectively skip straight through. I was about to say, are we going to have to wave at Mark to make sure that they go down the other side? But thankfully, they have worked out that they don't have one of these. So we will skip straight through. It literally just goes beep and then it opens up and then just like magic, straight out the other side and build your credit card making life a lot easier. The only thing that would have been cool would have been to stand right there and now have an SVJ going Wah! That's exactly the noise they make. Instead, we'll just take it easy until they catch us in a second. Does everyone have an STO today? <laughs> this is suddenly looking pretty dramatic. There's some sort of fire here. I've actually managed to already get all the cones out. Uh, as a forest fire. It feels like it's, yeah, it's literally in the trees. It's not even the, um, there are definitely police looking at us. <laughs> Thumbs up. <laughs> Hopefully they've got no, no interest in what we're up to, but that's a forest fire. Hopefully it sticks localized, and doesn't get anybody impacted. Anybody. Look at this. This is all completely burnt out. Whoa. That stuff's terrifying. I mean, no houses anywhere near, but still. That looks pretty scary. I'm gonna guess that this is another one. Hopefully, it's not a gumballer who's been revving far too much. Um, no, I joke. I guess it is definitely the same as what we had before, which is sad to see, but as long as no one's hurt, that is, of course, the most important thing. Uh, as we go past, yeah, it must have been that, uh, that bank and all the <laughs> fire. <laughs> People are like, what's going on with all of these cars driving past today? There's a gendarmerie sitting and waiting, but we're cruising. No problems here. Obviously, the vast majority of this rally is driving on motorways, but we do have some rather lovely roads. In fact, this little stretch of French countryside is very suited to being enjoyed in a car like this because we're actually going to a checkpoint at the Abbaye d'Aubrive which is somewhere in the middle of France, effectively. I'm not sure exactly what the location is, but we're gonna get there in a moment and be able to take a proper look at it. But other than driving out of Edinburgh, when we were on some similar kind of roads, to be honest, just Scottish countryside rather than the French countryside, um, we haven't had very much opportunity to enjoy. Today is about driving this car up to the mountains at the end of the day. But hey, I'm all for having the opportunity to put the foot down in this kind of place if we can, albeit really, really bumpy. I'm not sure if you can tell that. This is in the softest suspension mode. If you put this car into Trofeo, oh God, it's, inst it's instantly horrible. <laughs> it's so, so firm here. Anyway, only about eight kilometers down here until we arrive at our stop. 
Well, we've inadvertently run into the back of Team on the Run with their group of cars who actually passed us not very long ago. And I think they're doing some photo shoots and things. So I've got to decide now if I'm going to slowly overtake them all and move up the line, or if I'm just going to chill and we'll get there very shortly. In fact, I have a quick look at Waze and we've got cop, cop, cop. We're going to chill. <laughs> look, is that, a, is that a cop? Is that literally a cop on the left there? I think it could even be. We're going 50 in a 90. <laughs> Well under the speed limit. We're all chill. Nobody's doing anything wrong. <laughs> They're recording. Someone, one of the officers was holding a phone filming us. <laughs> I don't know, maybe that's to actually log the cars on the plates or something. Maybe it's to post on their own social media. You never know, you never know. As we go in, some of our friends are coming out. Some of the earlier group. <laughs> Hurricane GTR, SL. And the Portofino, this is what I was saying. I like that with the air horns. There are so many cars and people leave at different times and you often find yourselves not seeing some of those cars for the entirety of the rally. Like you wonder how it's possible that these people have been on the same drive that you've been on when you're at each checkpoint and you never see them on the move. But we are very near to where we're going. Just these tiny little narrow French streets, not exactly suited to oncoming Gumball supercars, although this is all one way bit around this house is kind of funky. Oh, this car's so firm. That was rough. This is really rough. And this is in the softest suspension setting. I would love something right now like a Ferrari with a bumpy road mode button just to make it a little bit more pleasant because it's solid. Here we are. Look at this. Oh, this is really pretty. This is what I love about Gumball. It brings us to these incredible locations, amazing places. You don't really know what you're in store for. Oh, they've got the flares going. That's fun. And yeah, it definitely smells of flare right now. They look cool, but they um, kind of smell a bit like you're at a fireworks night. The sign says, welcome to Aubrive. Bienvenue à Aubrive. We've just parked in a rather lovely line of gumball cars. How scenic is this? What a nice place to be with all of these brightly coloured skittles everywhere. It's a little bit of that difference between the architecture that's behind us and the cars that we've just driven in with. <laughs> this is where we're having our lunch stop at 4pm. We actually had a little bit of lunch earlier and obviously some photos and we might post the car in the middle or something to get some shots before we head out from here onwards for, well, we'll try and pack some cars together for the leg over to Switzerland. The turnaround here is fast. We've just been in to grab something to eat very quickly. Lots of new cars, different cars. I think GR Yaris is about to roll off. We've just had the GT Black Series and the 812 heading out. This is really very cool. Look at this. What a fun car to bring on the, uh, on the rally. Watch out for that sculpture right there on the floor. <laughs> they certainly don't have any luggage space issues like so many of the gunballers do with SF90s, STOs and the like. It's time to make a move. We've got the 812s, Team 27, we're out as well. Off we go. Next stop, Switzerland. We'll probably have a checkpoint before along the way. We've also got a video to upload, some editing to figure out, pictures to do, all the social media stuff because we're trying to share everything with you guys as fast and as quickly as we can so you can see what's going on. So you can be as, part of, as much a part of this journey as possible. Goodness, I just turned the AC down. I probably shouldn't have done. It's got very hot very quickly, just having the windows down. As you can probably imagine on a day like today, it's 30 something degrees Celsius. Um, pretty much one of the first hot periods of the year I've actually had. The car says it's 36. I don't know if it's that hot, but it is certainly pretty toasty right now. Anyway, cool group of cars to be driving with. So off we head, let's go. Incoming pack of cars. Sweet. Sweet. <laughs> and another Ferrari. And off we go. We very quickly lost the pack, but I tell you what, we're near Besançon. Have a look at the views around here. Just crossed over the water. This is absolutely stunning. What I wanted to talk about though, is the drive, <laughs> I don't think you saw that, but those bikers all went crazy for this car. I mean, it's a bright pink Lamborghini, right? No, what I decided to do today was to bring this car 
for the longest leg, the longest drive of this year's Gumball 3000. Today is 1,048 kilometers. That's 651 miles in a car that, as you can see from any bump we go over, is the firmest car I own, the least practical car I own. There is nowhere in here to put anything. I've got food and snack wrappers wedged into door handles, telepiast devices squeezed into small gaps. There's no space to put any camera gear or anything else that we need inside here. It's literally just like wedged everything in. So for the longest day on some choppy, twisty roads, in a car that's got nowhere to put anything, not really the best choice. I have literally made the worst choice for today. Now, when I was picking the cars and which car I would bring for which day of this rally and how to plan it, I chose the Zenvo for day one because start line with the Zenvo, but also home ground. Now, one thing you won't think about is that you have to take out a specific insurance policy for the Gumball 3000. That's quite a big deal. It's very, very expensive. And obviously things like driving a car of that value in a country that it's familiar with and being able to park it straight after back at my garage, no storage, no transport, no complicated things, made it a lot easier. So that's why the Zenvo was day one. I mean, just driving the start line in the Zenvo was mad. Like, let's be real, that's, that's the absolute reason. SLS, I was super keen to drive. Loved the idea of driving it out of London, even if left-hand drive was a little bit silly. This car today though, I guess I probably didn't really spare that much thought for. Well, we've got tunnels. We're going into Switzerland through some tunnels. I'm pretty sure this is a 70 kilometer per hour speed limit, which is disappointingly slow for a, a nice tunnel. Oh well, second gear, hey. No, so today for the mountains, I figured tunnels and things, this would be nice. There are like six STOs on this rally. The LT through Italy, cruising, Lake Como, it's gonna be amazing. The SF90, again, another car I absolutely love. I had thought we were gonna do something on that penultimate day that the SF90 would be very suited for, which isn't actually happening, that's slightly frustrating. And then the GT Black Series gets the finish line very specifically because of home ball and what's coming after Gumball a lot of miles that's the car that as you guys know i'll drive everywhere and anywhere and just do tons and tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of miles with so the gt black series is prepared for what's coming after the end and going to some places that i have never been before which is really quite exciting um yeah sto today should i have brought the ford gt should i have brought insert whichever other car comes to mind maybe i'll never know i thought about bringing the gt 500 for another gumball given it's done one but then this will just go back around in circles. This car felt like a, a good choice. So we went for it. Just not suited to over a thousand kilometers in one day. Trust in the nav. It says police here, eyes out. Cruise control at the speed limit. Is there like a hidden camera or something? There it is, hidden cameras. Sneaky, sneaky, but you're not gonna get us. Oh, as something falls. Oh, that was the car key. You see, I told you I've got nowhere to put anything. <laughs> the Lambo key just falls down the side of the seat. Oh, I'm having a disaster with all of this inside here. There's nowhere for anything. Anyway, oh, I should have ticked. Yes, but hey, onwards. I think there's another one. Is it there? Yeah, literally there. We're not in Switzerland yet. We're still in France, I think. It's in Switzerland that you should have tons of these that you have to be careful of. Oh, well. Up on the hillside is a castle. That's quite spectacular, especially with the sunlight on it like this. What a lovely time of day to be driving up the hills. We're very near the Swiss border as well now. That's really cool. Just the random things you find when you're driving through the Alps, through the mountains. Is there another one lurking here? I've got the nav telling me. Maybe, maybe not. Yes, literally hiding behind that car actually. Just on the right hand side behind the car. There we go. Gosh, they really do not want you to speed on this road. Or they knew we were coming. One or the other. I guess those must be cameras. I don't think I've ever seen those before. They must be. I don't know. I have absolutely no idea. We're now in Switzerland, and apparently our first Swiss camera is waiting for us. Yeah, there it is, right in front of us. That sneaky box hiding off the side of the road. I, I'm amazed on this route, actually, how many cameras there are. Like, they're absolutely everywhere. Um, 
it's just, we're gonna chill. We're gonna chill. I mean, look at the view that's opening up here. Starting to be able to see that around the corner. Spectacular scenery. I love driving around here. Just when you're in Switzerland, and we've been trying to reiterate this to gunballers, you get fines for literally anything over the speed limit, and your fines are means tested based on what they think you're worth, your net worth. So what the car you're driving, how much money they think you have, they fine you a lot of money. So basically, when you're driving cars like this, stick it up, part of the rally, chill. Completely chill. I talked about this at length when I was driving the SLS Black Series here, in fact, nine months or so ago, maybe nearly a year ago, actually, now. But yeah, we'll roll down the hill. This is how Switzerland works. Down to 80, and that's the camera. Literally there. Sneaky one there on the bridge. Sneaky, sneaky. I mean, it is roadworks after all, coming down to one lane, but still. That is a view and a half as we now come into some roadworks. Oh, and there's a Gumball Range Rover. You can't quite see, but up ahead of us. The view, regardless, is unreal. As I've kind of gone the wrong side, we can't see too much of it. But that is mega. What a place. Flashing blue lights. Oh, police car. Flashing blue lights. Obviously coming the other way, so no issue, but nonetheless. Look at that, look at that. Wow, Switzerland is such a beautiful country to drive through. It's stunning. Yet again, there's actually a police car lurking there. I mean, we're not going anything like the speed limit, but that was actually a police car. Interesting. We just drove into a tunnel in the dry. We've driven out and it's now wet, which is not ideal. Not ideal in particular for Tony, because he's driving tomorrow's car, which is the LT, which is on some slippy tires. Trofeo ours. Um, whoops, but hopefully, no, I suspect it's gonna be wet up top. We know that there is a bit of a grid up in, uh, in Verbier, which is of course a very upmarket ski town. We're going to the hotel up there for tonight. I've been to Verbier a few times in the past, driving and actually skiing as well. It's a lovely place. Uh, there are definitely gonna be a few people around. He is on it, happy to let him go. <laughs> I'm just taking it easy, sticking to the limits because I am surviving today without trouble and I know there are a whole bunch of police up here. Hey, those guys are actually braving the weather to see the cars, respect. I think whatever happens, whatever the conditions up at the top, we're gonna play with the crowd, interact with the crowd, have some fun with the crowd because you guys have turned up despite this. Let's uh, have some fun with it and see what happens, but for now, just a chill drive up the hill. I think there's a police checkpoint just here. There is a police checkpoint. And that's Team Trill. And a whole lot of teams. Oh my goodness. F12, Roma, Defender, multiple police cars. I hope it's all good. I don't know. I think just checking documents, probably, hopefully. In theory, right around here somewhere, there it is. <laughs> My 675 LT Spider. <laughs> I love how this works out. Hello. Let's go to the grid. Let's go. Perfectly timed. <laughs> it's fun how that works out. Oh, the logistics of this coming together are like the icing on the cake, the cherry on the icing on the cake, because it took so much planning. But obviously, this morning, Tony took the SLS to Thorn Hedge. He's been to Milan. He's been to D Factory, who have very kindly been looking after the car in Milan, and now driven it here the other way. It's, it's, it's crazy. It's honestly the most absurd thing that we're doing this. Look how many people are braving this weather. So cool. Respect to everyone. Let's give some uh, first gear just as a thanks. And that's all we can do. It's Switzerland, 80 kilometers per hour. <laughs> Let's just enjoy what we can of this slightly inclement weather that we have up the hill, waiting for random police people. Hey, we've inadvertently caught up with a GT3 RS and an Urus. I actually didn't even realize that that's what we were following. <laughs> little gumball arrival, a little bit of a crew coming up to Verbier tonight. We are in a bit, hey, it's a schmoo. <laughs> Did you see that? There was a schmoo there. 
That's so cool. We're in a bit of a procession up the hill. <laughs> awesome. What a legend. I love that you guys have been bringing out your schmooze to the rally. That's so cool. <laughs> I love it. Anyway, we are making our way up. The sound of this thing reverberating off the rocks as we come to a quick stop because there's a gap in the tarmac. I don't think the Urus needed to slow down quite so much. Um, I mean, guys, I know there's a, a dip, but <laughs> it's not that horrific. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's really not that horrific. I mean, this is a firm and horrible car, but yeah. On we go. This is the beautiful town of Verbier then. You can very instantly tell that we are in the Alps. There should be a grid, I think, up at the hotel. Um, unfortunately, it's so cloudy and drizzly that we don't quite have the views of the mountains from up here that I'd have loved to have been able to share with you guys. Uh, but this is the town center. Okay, that's busier than I thought it was gonna be, looking straight up the high street. It's quite funny actually being here when there isn't like snow on the ground. It's a very different time of year, but we're here, we're arriving into town. I can hear the music, I can feel the vibes. This is Verbier, Switzerland. We are here with the STO and the LT. <laughs> Let's see how this is gonna go as we fall forwards. Gumballers arriving at our end destination. This is the midpoint of the rally, the middle of day or the end of day three, the middle of the whole journey. The fun thing here. Yeah, we can, we can swap stickers. We've swapped stickers. Stickers for anybody else who wants one, guys. Anybody want any stickers? I'm very carefully driving, I promise. Stickers, stickers, stickers. <laughs> Just kind of, hey, Tim, I, how's it going? Hey. <laughs> Let us drive a little bit through the crowd here and try and make our way up the hill. It is quite busy. Speak. Hiya. Let's go. <laughs> In this normally quiet, sleepy village, we're, <laughs> we're making our way up through. Oh, this is pretty crazy. This is pretty crazy. <laughs> Hi, how you doing? How's it going, guys? <laughs> oh my goodness! Look, <laughs> chaos. Should we? Uh, should we make some absolute chaos? How's it going, guys? Okay. I think we're going to make some absolute chaos for a minute. We're going to make some absolute chaos. How's everyone doing? That's all we like to hear. Who wants a t-shirt? That way? That's crazy. Let's hear it, guys. You guys are awesome. After, <laughs> after such a long drive, you know, I think it's so cool to be here with everyone. I, I just, yeah, mega, mega exhausted. But the energy here, just so good to be part of it. It's, you're like a rock star when you're on Gumball 3000. I can't get my head around the madness of all of this. But yeah, we're through the chaos. Up towards the hotel we go. I think we've made it. This is our hotel. Oh, we'll go get the cars parked and figure out what comes up next. We are down in the dungeon, you could say, the bottom of an underground garage waiting for other gumballers to arrive. But for the time being, the two cars parked side by side, today's car alongside tomorrow's car. It's crazy to say that. Obviously, we've also got the van here. We're going to take that upstairs very shortly, our support vehicle with everybody, because it's got all of our luggage in it. But today has been a long drive, over a thousand kilometers, over 650 miles. Like I said, not the best car for the purpose, perhaps, and obviously with that weather at the end, it's taken away from the bit that should be really mega, the bit that this was all about. But I tell you what, if it was raining today, and if that means it's dry tomorrow, that's going to be insane. We're now halfway through Gumball 3000. We've had actually, though, the longest of the legs. It's going to get shorter from here on, which we all need because we're absolutely exhausted already. But this is the thing with Gumball, meeting all of you guys, seeing some spectacular places, just going to random things that you never knew existed or that you never knew that you could find on a journey like this. So maybe I bought the worst or brought this time the worst car for the day, but I'm not complaining. It was still epic. Thank you to all of you guys. Thank you to, well, the SLS is now going to Thornhedge. Thank you to their team. 
that's now going to go to D-Factory, where that's come from. Thank you to their team, and thank you, of course, to all of you for watching. Your support is hugely appreciated. But that is it for day three of the 2023 Gumball 3000 from Edinburgh to Montenegro. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you soon. Cheers!